So I decided I'm going to go on some shorter hiking journeys before I venture off on my long trek later this summer. And I thought I'd create some variations of protein bars. But here's the thing, I don't have a recipe, so I'm creating these intuitively on the fly. Well, once again, I started making this and realized I probably should create a video for my own sake because if I really like this and I want to recreate it, I'm not going to remember because I haven't been writing down what I put in this. What am I making? High fat, high protein bars with no flour. What I have in here so far is 100 grams of sunflower seeds. I have approximately a half a cup of whole raw pumpkin seeds that are hulled. These are hemp heart. I put two cups of hemp hearts in here. I put one cup of pumpkin seed flour. This is just raw pumpkins that I ground into a flour. I put one cup of almond flour. Same thing, it's just almonds that are ground up into a flour. I put a cup of coconut flour. I added three quarters of a cup of kefir yogurt and raw honey. So this is yogurt kefir that I make. I fermented that and then I added raw honey to it and I allowed it to ferment in my fridge for about a month and then I dehydrated it on low to preserve all the enzymes and the probiotics and everything that's in here. So this added to this is going to add the benefits of probiotics as well as the benefits of raw honey. Now I'm going to add 141 grams of pure creamed coconut. You can use coconut mana. It's the same sort of concept. It's essentially, it's the meat of the coconut with a little bit of fat. Now I'm going to add about a cup of these golden berries. So I'm gonna add a cup of that. And I have some prunes. You can use dates instead of prunes, but I like the fiber and the inulin of the prunes. These are prebiotic. So I'm just gonna blend this a bit. And now I'm going to add in some coconut oil coconut oil. The idea is you want to make this into a bit of a paste because this is going to be your moisture and what binds all the ingredients together. And what you'll end up with is a really nice paste. Before I add this to my mixture, I want to add some salt, about a teaspoon of Redmond's Real Salt to this. Mm, maybe a teaspoon and a half. You can add any sort of nut to this and or seed if you have chia seeds in fact i do you can add chia seeds and i think i will the reason why i don't like to add peanut butter is because it's rich in lectins my body doesn't tolerate lectins and it's inflammatory and in fact for me too much almond is inflammatory which is why i like to blend the almond with the coconut most seeds I don't have issues with. So hemp hearts, which is just the seed of the hemp plant, the marijuana plant, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds. I don't have issues with those types of things. Now I want to add some pea protein powder, some hemp protein powder, and some chia seeds. So about a half a cup of chia seeds, about a half a cup of pea protein powder, and a half a cup of the hemp protein powder. I'm going to add some molasses, good couple tablespoons. Perfect. Molasses are rich in potassium and iron. This way I'm getting a lot of my electrolytes as well as some good protein, some good fat, and all natural sugar. So essentially this is a meal replacement bar. So you can put any fruit in here. I don't have goji berries at the moment. I use them all up, but you could throw goji berries in here. If you like raisins, you can put raisins in here. I'm not a big raisin fan. Dried blueberries, dried cranberries, whatever fruit you like, you can add to this. In using my hands, I can already tell that it's lost the moist texture because I've added a lot more of dry ingredients. So now I want to add in a little more coconut oil. So I'm adding an extra half cup of coconut oil so that I can get the texture that it is that I'm looking for. So you'll notice that I have not put any quinoa flakes or oat flakes in this. That's an option for you if you want to add quinoa flakes or oat flakes, you can. I want to keep this more to a nut seed type protein bar, which is why I didn't use them in this recipe. 
So I have a good consistency. It's holding its shape quite well. Let's taste it. I think I could use just a little more salt. So I've added about another quarter to a half teaspoon of salt and that is a perfect texture. So now all I need to do is put this into a tray that I can make bars with it. The fruit and the molasses and the honey that's in the yogurt kefir is what sweetens it. If you try this recipe and you find it's not sweet enough, you can add any type of sweetener, whether that's monk fruit, xylitol, erythritol, stevia, cane sugar, whatever it is that you like to put in your body. My preference is that I don't typically like overly sweet food. This is perfect. I have a cookie sheet. It's about an inch deep. That should work perfectly. And because I'm going to be cutting these squares and I don't want to cut into the Teflon because once you cut into the Teflon, then those chemicals start seeping into your food. I'm going to line this with parchment paper and all I want to do is press this into this sheet. How deep you make this bar and how long and how wide you make these bars is going to depend on your caloric intake, your hunger, etc. I have a mini rolling pin. I'm just going to roll that flat. Now I'm going to put this in the fridge to let it harden. This is our finished product. So you have to decide how big of a protein bar you want because that's going to determine the size that you cut. I think I'm a bit nervous that my knife will go through so I'm going to take this off transfer this onto a cutting board. I don't wreck my cupboard either. And I'm going to use this knife. So you can see that's holding its shape when I cut it, which is exactly what I wanted. Obviously I'm not cutting in a straight line, am I? And so essentially that's your bar. So after trying the parchment paper and the cling wrap, I have to admit I prefer the cling wrap. If you want, you can store all of these in a big Ziploc bag or you can store them in individual Ziploc bags. Best to keep these in the fridge or the freezer for the simple fact that even though the coconut oil is shelf stable, regardless of whether it's solid or liquid state, eventually these seeds, when exposed to extreme periods of heat, will go rancid. So not good to keep these at room temperature simply for that reason. And you might want to label it just so you remember what you have in the bag. For this next recipe, instead of using peanut butter, hazelnut butter, almond butter, etc., I'm going to use tahini. This is sesame seeds. I have a cup of tahini that I'm going to add into my blender. A cup, it looks like it's over a cup, but there's lots of space around there. A cup of non-melted coconut. And I guess I should say that's coconut oil. I want to put this on the blender. I have coconut milk powder, so I'm going to add a quarter cup. If you don't have coconut milk powder and you have coconut flour, you can use that. I'm going to add two cups of hemp hearts. I'm going to add a cup of chia seeds. This is pumpkin seed flour. All you do is take raw hulled pumpkin seeds and grind them into a powder. That's all you do to make this. I'm going to add a solid cup, oh, two cups. Let's add two cups of that. And now I'm going to add two teaspoons of Redmond's Real Salt. I like Redmond's just because it has a lot of minerals in it, but you can use pink Himalayan salt or whatever salt you have. And now I'm going to add a quarter cup of hemp protein powder. And a quarter cup of pea protein powder. And I'm just going to mix all that up. And now I want to add some raw honey. This is raw wildflower honey. I want to add about a quarter cup. Mix that up. You might want to taste it at this point to see for sweetness. Mm, for me, that's perfect. 
And lastly, I'm going to add a cup of quinoa flakes. You can use oat flakes, but the reason why I want to use quinoa in this particular recipe, quinoa flakes are higher protein and lower carbs than oats, and also they contain the full spectrum of the amino acids, which is why I like to use the quinoa flakes. And then I'm just going to mix all that together. And then I'm going to let it rest for about a good 20 minutes so that the chia seeds can absorb the moisture that will cause them to swell up and that will create better binding. If you want, you can add cocoa nibs to this if you want a bit of a caffeine kick. Again, try to keep in mind that this is going to be a high fat, high protein. The moment you start adding dried fruits and other grains, such as if you blend quinoa with oats, now you're adding more carbs. If that's your intention, that's fine. But if you want more of a high fat, high protein, lower carb, then follow this recipe. If you don't want the honey, you can substitute the honey with maple syrup or agave, xylitol, erythritol, monk fruit. In other words, if you want it to be even more low carb, opt for a keto friendly sugar substitute. Personally, I like the health benefits of honey. So for that reason, that's why I used the honey. That said, you can use maple syrup if you don't have honey and you have lots of maple syrup. Last but not least, I have some whole hulled raw pumpkin seeds. I'm going to add two cups. So as you can see, this is more like a nut and seed protein bar, high fat, high protein, very low carb. It has a lot of your electrolytes. I just want to test that now, see what it tastes like. So for me personally, I need to add a little more salt because I do like that saltiness in my bar, especially with the nut bar. And now I just want to see, this is where I have to use my hand because I want to see what the texture is. This is still a bit too wet to form into a bar. So that's good because now, now that this chia seeds have absorbed a lot of the moisture, I can decide whether or not I want to add more chia seeds, hemp hearts, or quinoa. You can add ground flax to this too. So I think that's what I'm going to add is some ground flax. I just happen to have a jar of fresh ground flax in my fridge. So I'm going to add a half a cup. Actually, I'm going to add a cup of ground flax. Now I want to mix that in with my hand because I want to get a feel for it and make certain that it has the right texture. So by adding the flax, I'm adding estrogens, natural estrogens that are very good for women, especially for uterine health, and I've added fiber. So between the fat, the protein, and the fiber, this will keep me satiated for a long time. Almost there. I'm going to add another quarter cup. Actually, let's add a half a cup. Another half cup. So I've added another half cup of the ground flax seed. That's feeling better. So at this point, you just want to take it in your hand and squeeze it and see if it holds its shape. And if it does, then you know you've got a good product. The reason you want it to hold its shape when it's warm, because this will harden when you put it in the fridge. But if you're going to be outdoors like me, in the hottest days of summer, this is going to go back to room temperature. So you need to know at room temperature that it's going to hold its shape and that it doesn't ooze excess fat throughout your backpack or your food bag, whatever you're carrying it in. And last but not least, I want to add a little bit of cinnamon powder. I have a half teaspoon here. So I think I'm going to add a full teaspoon. There's a half, roughly a teaspoon of cinnamon. And of course, a pinch of cardamom as well, about a quarter of a teaspoon of cardamom. These spices can be optional for you. It'll just add a nice warmth to the taste, which will give you a mental emotional comfort. Try to remember that a lot of times when you eat, you actually eat for your mind and your emotions and less for your body, at least most people do. Unless you're extremely health conscientious, the beautiful thing about this recipe is it will appeal to your mind, your emotions, and give your body what it needs. So now we just want to do the form test to make sure it holds its form, and it does. 
So I'm going to use the pan and the parchment paper from my last batch. And you're just going to press it in. Any rolling pin will work. If you feel satisfied just using your hands to press down, by all means you do that. Now all I want to do is put this in the fridge for about 15-20 minutes and let it harden up before I cut it. So it's nice and hard. I can take this off and put it on a chopping block so I can cut it. So already I'm noticing, compared to the previous recipe, this is a much softer bar. So for that reason, I do believe I could have added perhaps more pumpkin seed flour or more hemp or pea protein powders. I could have added more flax seed just to make it a little more solid. But let's take a look at how it is in a soft form, it's still pretty good. It holds its structure. I cut off a sheet of cling wrap. I don't think I need that much for one bar, so I'm just gonna cut. So I'm just gonna cut the cling wrap so that I don't waste it unnecessarily. And now I'll place my bar on that. Yeah, that's perfect. And once you have these all individually wrapped, similar to the other recipe, just put them in a Ziploc bag and store them in your fridge or in your freezer until you're ready to pull them out and eat them. And again, you'll want to label it. In a future video, I'll show you how to make protein bars using whey protein powders. But for today, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed creating it. Until I see you in a future video. Thanks for watching. Ciao for now.